worship of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may stand up. <laughs> Please join me in our call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please join me in prayer for this World Communion Sunday. Almighty God, from the ends of the earth, you have gathered us around Christ's holy table. Repeat after me. We come to feast together. We come to feast together. Have mercy on your church, troubled and divided. Renew us and make us one. Renew us and make us one. Amen. O oh God, we join with our sisters and brothers around the world in remembering Christ's sacrifice for us, for the opportunity to eat and drink together, and for the life we have received, we give you thanks and praise. In the abundance of your many gifts, grant us grace to fill one another's lives with love, redeem, restore, and remold us until we are made new, transform our daily bread, into the bread of life and the cup that we drink into the cup of salvation we pray in jesus name amen please join in our opening hymn in the faith we sing in unity we lift our song number 2221 
seems to be a mystery person right now, who left a little note to me on my notes up here. It says, hi, guess who? Well, it's not Pastor Joe, it's not my wife, it's not Pat Perkins. So oh, I don't know who that person is, but I thank you for thinking of me this morning. <laughs> the Old Testament lessons comes from the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1, and also verse 2. One through, uh, excuse me, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. There was once a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, what have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from going to and from on the earth and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity. Although you incite me, incited me against him, to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, Skin for skin, all that people have they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, he's in your power. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord, and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a pot shed with, with which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God? but not receive the bad. In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Our proclamation comes from Psalms 26. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity and I have trusted the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes and I walk in the faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with the hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence, and I go around your altar, O Lord. Sing aloud a song of thanksgiving, and tell me all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty, those in whose hands are evil devices, and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity, redeem me, and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. The New Testament lesson for us this morning is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, 1 through 4, and chapter 2, verses 5 through 12. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, who he appointed heir of all things, through whom he has also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's well-being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down to the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the names he has, he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about the which we are speaking to angels, but to someone who testifies somewhere what are human beings 
that you are mindful of them, or mortals, that you care for them. You have made them from a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now, in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them. But we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he may taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Because of when they were gathered 
And the Pharisees came forward and asked him not to know the answer Jesus was going to give. They asked him this question to trap him so that they could then sentence him to death. So that they then could destroy him and all that he stood for. Imagine that. But in this passage, in the house, as Jesus lifts up the little child and commands his disciples to let the children come, Jesus tenderly embraces the child. And this is a gorgeous portion of scripture that often gets overshadowed by the Pharisees and what they did and the lesson that Jesus taught in answering their question. You see, their question was about, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? That was the question. But listen closely to the answer Jesus gave. He didn't answer the question about divorce. He went back to the beginning of creation and answered perfectly the question of marriage. As God created marriage to be. And they didn't understand that. In fact, they wanted to continue to argue with Jesus about the divorce. And even called down the law of Moses in order to make themselves right. But Jesus went further back. And wanted them to understand that in the beginning, when God created Okay, so Jesus has authority to explain this to us and to them. If you go to John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is Jesus. He dwelt among us. And he has dominion and authority and power over all created things and beings. And so when he talks about creation, he knows what he's talking about. And when God offers us the perfect created order, male and female, and that the man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one, and nothing should separate them. That's in the perfect world of creation. Now we know that human beings didn't remain perfect, that the fall occurred, and we became sinful beings in need of a savior. God knew this too. And so what God did, as we heard in Hebrews, he came down from heaven and became flesh, a human being named Jesus, so that the world might be saved through him. This is a beautiful lesson of how much God loves us. And when you put that together with Jesus holding a little child Blessing the child and saying, unless you come as a child, you will not receive the kingdom of God. That's important. How do we become children after we're grown and adults? There's a question. He's not talking about children per se, but children of God. Having the faith to believe who God is, who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is. This is what this passage is referring to when Jesus says, Truly tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a child will never end it. But when you said yes to Jesus, when you asked Jesus into your heart, no matter how old you were when you did that, you became a child of God. And the promise of salvation is assured to you. Your sins are forgiven as you repent of them and say, Jesus, I need you. I am a sinner. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Help me to walk in the will of God the Father. This is what this is talking about. So that as we enter into the kingdom of God here and now, we're guaranteed to be in the presence of a holy God 
forever and ever, in eternity. This is the beautiful passage and message that Jesus conveyed to his closest friends. And as we look to Hebrews, this is also what Paul is telling. I'm sorry, not Paul, because we're not sure who wrote Hebrews. <laughs> but this is what is being said, that God left earth, left heaven, and came down to earth in such a way that we can know God. That God revealed God's self to human beings by becoming a human being, yet fully divine, in the form of Jesus Christ. The language in Hebrews offers us what it means to have grace, what it means to be made perfect or sanctified or complete, not in our own righteousness, but in that of Jesus Christ. When we stand before the throne on judgment, God won't see our sin. God will see the righteousness of Jesus. Thanks be to God, we don't have to do that on our own. That we can stand clothed in Christ's righteousness, being joined with Christ, here and now and for eternity. We have the opportunity to love like God loves, here and now and for eternity. By being made complete in Christ, it's not by our own doing. It is by what God has already done through Jesus Christ. We can enter into the kingdom of God as children of God, joint heirs with Christ, being made whole in perfect love. I ask you again, have you ever felt Jesus so close to you at any point in your life where you felt the embrace of Christ, where you felt the heartbeat of God? Where perhaps you were in great need because of suffering in your body or because you're grieving the loss of a loved one. Did you feel the presence of Christ in a tangible way that you knew for certain you were being held? Sometimes it's hard to feel Christ when everything's going good. When everything's perfect in our world because we're making it that way. God oftentimes uses our suffering for us to feel God closer to us. During this pandemic, there have been many who have felt God's presence. And there have been many who have not. But know this, God is present with each of us all the time, whether we recognize it or not. And Jesus reveals who God is to us by being available to all of us all the time. This is a beautiful gift that we are offered as we are joined with Christ. But not only with Christ, especially as we celebrate World Communion Sunday this day, we will also be joined with the saints around the throne at the holy table of God. When we receive the body and blood of Christ, knowing that brothers and sisters worldwide are doing likewise on this day. What a beautiful thing also know that those who have gone before us are also celebrating in this communion as we, the body of Christ, join with Christ, gather around the table and celebrate and sing songs of praise and shout hallelujah and hosanna. We, the church, the children of God, come to God as little children. And Jesus invites us to do so every single day of our life, and especially as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion here today. Feel God's presence. Feel Jesus hugging you this day, lifting you up, touching you in such a way that your life has changed and you are blessed. And then be a blessing to somebody else. We are joined with Christ. We are the body of Christ. And we are the ones whom Christ reveals God to, the world around us. <clears throat> Let's be that 
church. Joined with Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue with the service of word and table. Please join me on page 12 of your hymnal. Christ our Lord invites you to his table. All who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Most Christ merciful God, we confess that we have not the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Let us take this time to offer one another signs of Christ's love and peace.
Father God, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you, God, for loving us. We thank you, God, for giving us Jesus. We thank you, God, for letting us give to you what belongs to you of your great provision toward us, of our resources, our time, our talent, our prayers, our service, and our witness. We give you thanks, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We will continue with the great thanksgiving for this World Communion Sunday.
Children of God, let's pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray with confidence, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Because there is one love. We who are many partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The table of the Lord is ready. Come, taste and see, the Lord is good. You'll be able to take the prepackaged elements Come to the rail. I will serve the choir first. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in our closing hymn, which is 624, 624 in your hymnal.
love and serve the Lord, being joined with Christ and serving your neighbor. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.